Question, order. Question number nine, Carmel Cepoloni. To the Minister of Finance, is the Productivity Commission report released yesterday indicative of a government agenda to privatise the welfare system? Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, no. It's indicative of a government agenda to get better results for people who really need them. We are happy to, happy to debate the kind of tool set that the Productivity Commission has laid out, but I would like to signal to that member and to the Labour Party we are focused more on getting better results and less on uh, their ideological obsessions. What we're doing is building a system that allows governments to invest up front in personalised interventions for the child, the individual or the family for a long-term impact and to track the results of that investment. The Productivity Commission has produced a framework uh, which gives government a wider range of tools. It has been heavily consulted with the social service sector uh, to a draft form and now will be further consulted before they give us a final report. But I expect at the end of that the Labor Party will be out of step with pretty much everybody by sticking to their 1970s models. Supplementary, Supplementary question, Carmel Cipollone. Does the Minister intend to establish a voucher system for social services in New Zealand? Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, yes, we are underway establishing a voucher system, particularly for, dis for uh, people with disabilities. Uh, it's called Enabling Good Lives. It's been broadly welcomed by the disability sector. I suspect that the mass adoption of it by the Australian Government in the form of the NDIS is going to put a lot of pressure on New Zealand to further develop a sophisticated voucher system for people with disabilities. And the reason why is because it gives them some choices rather than being subject to a system where the Labor Party tell the providers order, what to order, say order, how to lobby the order. Government. The Supplementary question, Jamie Lee Ross. What progress has the government made in delivering better outcomes from social services? Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, we've made considerable progress in uh, focusing on our customers. That is, getting to know much better the circumstances and prospects of those most vulnerable New Zealanders. For instance, a child under the age of five who is known to SIFs, whose parents are supported by a benefit, uh, and where either parent has had contact with corrections, and there are a lot of those families, around 470 of them in Rotorua, for instance, that child is around five times more likely to end up on a long-term benefit and seven times more likely than the average to get to be in prison before the age of 21. Now, in the light of that information, we feel a moral obligation, as well as a fiscal one, to act now to reduce the long-term costs. And we're not order, going to wait order, around for the Labor order, Party to tell us how to do order. it. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Uh, supplementary question, Carmel Cepoloni. Does he agree with the findings of the Draft Productivity Commission's report he commissioned that the government faces incentives to underfund contracts with NGOs for the delivery of social services with probable adverse consequences for service provision? If so, does he agree that greater contracting out could harm service provision? Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, I agree with the first one, but not the second one. Uh, government often does deliberately, as a result of government policy actually, uh, pay less than the full cost of services, and often uh, at the uh, users of those services need a higher level of more sophisticated service than what we currently offer them. Uh, there's no evidence at all that contracting out, as the member calls it, uh, will reduce service provision. Sometimes that is the right way to do it. For instance, the government owns no elderly care beds in New Zealand. Uh, it's all contracted out. That's been a bipartisan approach for many years with a highly vulnerable population. Uh, there are other areas where there are benefits from competition and also benefits from cooperation. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Jamie Lee Ross. What results is he seeing from investment in better public services? Yeah, Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, one of the first results we're seeing from taking an investment approach to public services is a much better understanding of our customers. 
the uh, reports published now six monthly into the welfare liability have lifted the lid on a very complex ecosystem of dependency. Uh, and now we are starting to take initiatives in order to change the way that system works. Uh, for instance, uh, around 70% of the people who sign up for a benefit in any given month have been on a benefit before. They are long-term, regular and returning customers. And in the past, we thought that because we found them a job once, that was the end of it. In fact, they need sustained support and employment, and we expect to be taking more measures in order to back up that initiative. But there will be hundreds of others which will involve contracting out, will involve competition, will involve the private sector, and will involve better results. Yeah, Mr Speaker. Point of order. Mr Speaker, I, I just ask them perhaps that you might reflect on th this particular question today, which was set down by my colleague Carmel Cipollone regarding a, a report of the Productivity Commission and a particular aspect of the report that she was questioning on and the very broad and uh, uh, nature of the supplementary questions allowed from the government and the extensive and lengthy answers from the Minister and whether in fact that's acceptable. Well, I certainly will um, reflect very carefully on the questions that have flowed. Um, the answers on this occasion have been long, and on two occasions I've curtailed the answers as it's continued. Um, but it's an issue that's, I think, relatively important to this House. And when I look at the tone of the question about a suggestion of privatising the welfare system, I felt that the, the topic was important enough to have a reasonable airing in this House. But I will reflect on, on the uh, nature of the questions that flowed from the primary question, and I certainly accept the member's point that some of the answers have been quite long. Supplementary question? Supplementary question, Mr Carmel Speaker. Cipollone. Does he agree with the finding of the report that he commissioned that, quote, problems with contracting out are often symptoms of deeper causes, such as the desire to exert top-down control to limit political risk, end quote? Honourable Bill English. Yes. Supplementary Quest question, Mr oh, Speaker. Supplementary question, Carmel Cipollone. Does he agree that the government needs to take responsibility for system stewardship and for making considered decisions that shape the system, including taking the overarching responsibility for monitoring, planning and managing resources in such a way as to maintain and improve system performance? Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, yes, government can do a better job of what the government does. We're still unravelling the damage done by the previous Labor government. Well, to, to, they, to our social services delivery, where they, they uh, turned it into what I would call a dumb funding system. But, Mr Speaker, communities and families have an important role, as well as governments, in fact, a more important role. In fact, one of the uh, programmes the Commission refers to as Whānau Ora, which is designed around the radical proposition that a lot of our most dysfunctional families can actually heal, heal some of their own problems and fix uh, some of their own, improve some of their own aspirations. Uh, we're going to go along with that because order, big government order, actually order. has hurt order. those families, not helped them. The answer's been, the question's been answered. Question number 10, Scott Simpson. Thank